Welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy Lane, the Queen of Belmain. Today we're gonna to talk about big mistakes made by newbie German Shepherd owners. And I probably made most of these myself. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna go through these mistakes. A lot of these I've made myself and I'm gonna give my either my own advice, just agree, or send you somewhere where you can get more information on that specific thing. Anyway guys, I hope this video can help someone out there. Let's get started. So biggest mistake number one. Uh, I assumed my clothes would not get harmed during training of this magnificent beast. Well guys, let me tell you that if you own anything black, just throw it out right now from my own personal experience. Uh, my wife won't wear anything black in this house. This dog hair gets all over it and you look like a mess when you walk down the street. Number two not buying two German Shepherds. Now, I don't think that's a mistake. I think that's a blessing in disguise. I think if you wanna buy a second German Shepherd, wait until you're around, you've had your German Shepherd for around two years, especially like if you're a newbie German Shepherd owner. This is not some magical number. This is just my own personal advice. Just because the amount of work to do it properly, it's just, it is so consuming. I think two is just gonna be too much pressure. And you know, a lot of people would probably just give up. Focus on the one you got for now, get a second one later on. Number three, letting him bark at the window. Now, this could get really annoying, especially if you live in a place like we do. So we live in a city of Sydney, and we all live very close to each other. Yes, we're in a little house, but you know, our we've got, we got people walking past their house every five seconds, and like, our lounge room's so close to the path that a stranger could literally reach through into our lounge room from the path if the window was open. So I'm very lucky that Lucy's not a barker in that respect. She's only triggered if someone touches the latch on the gate. And then that's good because I then have a warning of who's coming. But if she was a constant barker, that would get very old very quickly. And you'd have to do some type of correctional training um, to help manage that. But keeping in mind, these guys are natural barkers. I did experience this with my parents' German Shepherd recently because we had to look after her as my parents went away for our little holiday and she's the complete opposite to Lucy. Barks at absolutely everything. You can't freaking sneeze without her barking. So look, that was an experience of having a very vocal German Shepherd and just wanting to stand up on, yeah, on the desk to look out the window and bark at everything that walks past. So that took some getting used to and look, if I was to have her permanently, we'd be doing some serious, serious training just to form some boundaries on what is appropriate here and what's not. But understand your pain, contact a trainer. I stopped training my GSD. Now, I don't know why you would stop training your GSD. For all the newbie German Shepherd owners out there, owning a German Shepherd is a lifelong commitment as you probably have cottoned on to, but the training never stops either. I'm sure, yeah, as they get older, you can taper it down a little bit, but these guys need to be mentally stimulated all the time. So Lucy is nearly three years old and we still do multiple little sessions a day. Now, these can vary from day to day. Some days it's more, some days it's less, but Lucy always gets some obedience work every day. Now, it may be conducted when I'm feeding her or it may be conducted at the park playing ball with her, with her favorite um, ball because she's very toy driven. Um, but the point is that Lucy gets some type of mental stimulation every day. Not reinforcing good lead walking and correct methods of socialization. Yep, good lead walking could be a pain in the ass when you get, when the puppy gets a little bit older, um, when they're obviously 10, 8, 10 kilos, whatever, it, it's not gonna be that much of a drama, but they don't stay 10 kilos for long. Before you know it, 18 months has gone past, they are 30 kilos, 40 kilos, good to go. And getting dragged down the street is not nice for anyone. So best thing I can, best advice I can give you for that is a no pull halty, they work great. Um, no pull harnesses, they also work great. Now, if you want to go against the grain a little bit and utilize a really fantastic tool that has a bad rap with some people, is a prong collar. I utilize a prong collar for some of Lucy's training, um, and it's a fantastic tool. The reasons why there's a kind of there's, there's people on one side of the fence and people on the other. There's no middle ground with a prong collar. Um, you, people who love them, people who hate them, and the reason why they have developed such hate over the years, I think. Um, bad people have been using this good tool for the wrong reasons and inflicting damage. So essentially, you can, in, in my mind, you can, you can inflict damage with any tool. You can inflict a lot of damage with a flat collar. Um, so if you're gonna use a prong collar, do get the help of a dog trainer who understands the tool 
and you are good to go. Now socialization, super important. What we did with Lucy when we first got her, and I highly recommend you do with your new pup, if you're a new German Shepherd owner, is get them socialized around kids, um, especially with like young kids, boisterous kids, and you know little boys, and they're just loud and doing their thing. Um, I recommend getting your dog socialized around lots of little puppies, lots of little yappy dogs, because they're always gonna be yapping at them when they, especially when they get older and bigger like Lucy is now. Um, get them around big dogs, take them to the park, specific parks, do some socializing in there. Be careful what parks you do go to because people do have some bad experiences in dog parks, but find a good area and you know take your pup down to a good park. Working full time. This is a bit of a controversial topic. So with Luce, um, my wife and I, we both run our businesses. We are very busy people. We both work probably more than full time and we still own a German Shepherd. Now these guys do require a, a lot of work initially but as they get older, they do mellow out a little bit, so you're gonna have a lot more leniency. But at the start with Lucy, yeah, it was a lot of work. We even had to have a personal dog walker to come in and break up her day just so she didn't destroy everything. Um, she required training morning and night. It was a very, very, very structured and busy routine. So if you are working full time, don't be afraid to utilize dog walkers um, don't be afraid to get your family members in to try and help you with your pup. Um, make sure you put the work in before you go to work, training and all that sort of good stuff. And after you come home from work, don't just come home, bed you out and ask you be right mate, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, that isn't the attitude you want. You can have a German Shepherd and work full time because most people work full time, right? It's just about prioritizing the time around your work schedule and make sure the time your dog gets the time that it requires and deserves. So the next biggest mistake people have are taking their dogs to the dog park. Kind of contradicting to what I said before, but this is someone's obviously someone's experience. So there are experiences where people can have very bad times and traumatic experiences whilst taking their dog to dog parks. This is generally from other people not having control of their dogs while they're off lead. Unfortunately, this happens. There's an example that happened reg uh, just kind of recently in the last 12 months at one of the dog parks that we regularly go to with Lucy, and it is actually on the YouTube channel here, but at this specific dog park, a woman actually got mauled, uh, her and her German Shepherd, her German Shepherd ended up getting put down from the injuries, and the woman, I think, received 30 or 40 stitches. It was pretty brutal, and she was essentially, they were attacked by a some type of Mastiff pit bull mix thing, and the owner of that dog then hightailed it out of there as this was all happening. So they've obviously panicked and just ran and thought, oh my God, what, what do you even do? Like, it's a, that's a terrible and extreme thing to have happen, but it can happen. Take my advice from what I said before, like do your research when you're looking for a dog park. We, we go to lots of dog parks around Sydney. Um, there are lots of great and friendly and safe dog parks, but just understand you're not 100% always safe. So there's, there is always an element of risk to going to a dog park, but at the same time, there's always an element of risk when you hop into the car and you drive to the shops. There's an element of risk where you can have an accident, you know what I mean? So like, it's just doing everything to minimize the risks, understand that you have control of your dog. And if, you know, being observant of your surroundings and if there's something that you're a little bit funny about, pop your dog on a lead, get out of there. Now, this is actually not one of these, but this is a little compliment that Lucy got for her channel. Uh, for now, we have made no mistakes, and you are one of the people who helped me. Well, thank you very much, Lucy. Paul, well done. You're a good girl. You're showing people how it's done, aren't you? Um, that means a lot to us. Thank you very much for that lovely comment. Again, guys, we're not dog trainers. We are just dog German Shepherd enthusiasts. And this channel is all, yeah, you huffing and puffing. This channel is all about just doing more with your dog. That's what I want to portray. Just, we just love doing shit with our German Shepherd. She's a part of our family. So anyway, I tell everyone she's my firstborn daughter. The next one, number 11, putting a harness on my German Shepherd. Look, again, this is a bit of a sticky one. And this is actually a mistake I made when Lucy was about three months old. Yes, there are harnesses and then there are no pull harnesses. So there are hard, so what happened with us is one time I was taking Lucy for a walk and she had a flat collar on. And then a, a woman came up to me and started, I shit you not, started yelling at me because I had a collar on Lucy. Turns out she was some tree hugging hippie 
And this was just a normal collar. And I was like, what is your problem? Anyway, I thought, shit, am I doing the wrong thing? I rushed out after getting verbally abused by some chick and went and got Lucy a harness. And I'm like, this will do the trick, bang. And it was a harness design to actually encourage pulling. And I was like, are you shitting me? I had no idea like what this thing was. Anyway, I clicked her on and then I was getting dragged down the street. And I thought the best way to compensate this was a bungee lead. And then it was just, we, we were a hot mess walking down the street. Lucy's pulling me, we've got this pull harness and we've got this bungee lead going and we just look like this, abs we look like an absolute <laughs> I digress, but you may have put the wrong harness on him. So just take your harness back or just write it off and go get a no pull harness. If a harness is what you want to use, get a no pull harness or get a no pull halsey, as I said before. That'll change your life. That'll help you and your dog get a good walking rhythm, good walking routine, and you should be good to go. Number 12, allowed my German Shepherd to chase birds at the park. Now, this is a funny one, I can relate. So I kind of did the same thing with Lucy at the park. I let her chase birds. I thought it was a great idea for her to burn energy. She still does it to this day. But what I did, so Lucy has a crazy high prey drive uh, for small animals and things like that. But what I did was I essentially trained her to only do it on command. And now we can walk through the park and there are days when I don't let her chase the birds and she'll just walk at my heel and chill. She won't even look at them. But if I give her the command, she will go and chase them. Uh, look, if I could have my time again, I wouldn't have encouraged any bird chasing. But I was lucky enough to be able to control that down the track with some correctional training. But um, look guys, I think early on with your German Shepherd pups, don't encourage them to chase small animals and things. Biggest mistake I made was not getting my German Shepherd as a puppy and we later on had a lot of issues with aggression. Now, this can be a, a big thing, I suppose, if you were to get a rescue German Shepherd. Now, I'm not saying there's anything against rescue German Shepherds. I think getting a rescue German Shepherd are great because there are a lot of German Shepherds out there that need new homes. I do know that there are some rescue agencies that can be a bit iffy in telling you all the correct information about their past. So maybe just look into where you're gonna get this German Shepherd from um, to help prevent you know, getting a German Shepherd that's had a traumatic past, you bring it home and then it's just an absolute, it, it's more than what you can handle, especially if you've got kids and things around. I have heard of things like that happening before. So look, best advice I can give here is if you're gonna get a rehome German Shepherd, do due diligence, jump online, do some research, everything's on Google these days, and just put a little bit of work into it before you jump on and go make this commitment. And it could be a bit more than, you could be biting off a bit more than what you can chew. Alrighty, the next one, number 14, not teaching my dog recall early enough. Now this should be one of the first things that you teach your German Shepherd, or dog in that fact, cat, whatever it is. <laughs> Maybe not cats, but um, Definitely teach your dog recall before it goes off a lead or anything like that in a dog. Even if it's an off lead dog park, if you don't have recall down packs, stays on a lead, 100%. So best thing to do, start practicing at home. Literally, you and a family member, you stand at one end of the room, a family member at the other end of the room, and just have some treats and start calling the puppy over. You don't even have to call it its name when you first get it. Just make some funny noises, get its attention, you get it to come over when it comes over, treat, praise, repeat. Then. Obviously, as they succeed in that specific area, make it a little bit harder. Maybe utilize two rooms, three rooms, opposite ends of the house, and then maybe backyard, and just do this for the first few weeks. Number 15, not knowing the susceptibility to hip dysplasia with German Shepherds. So German Shepherds, the biggest cripple hammer, I think we all know it, we, we've all heard it before, the hind legs of these guys do give out eventually. Now that can happen to some German Shepherds, yes. Um, happens to a lot of larger breed dogs as well. And due to a lot of poor breeding and poor bloodlines and people backyard breeding, there's a lot of different problems and why this keeps happening. But one thing I learned, so when I was getting Lucy, I did all my research under the sun. I made sure that I, I pretty much canceled that all possibilities of getting hip dysplasia. Fingers crossed, she has no hip dysplasia. She's very genetically healthy. But I did everything right. But what I failed to recognize is there is still no 100% guarantee that she won't experience some type of hip dysplasia arthritis when she's older. So even if you, so what I recommend, I recommend you do all the research in the world, 
and you make sure you get it from a reputable breeder, all that good stuff, they practice good breeding practices, they have strong bloodlines, but no matter how much research you do onto minimizing this, that's all it is. You're minimizing the risk of hip dysplasia. If you buy your German Shepherd from a backyard breeder, you pretty much maximize that risk, like it's probably bound to happen. But if you got your German Shepherd from a reputable breeder and you, you, you're minimizing that risk, you're not canceling out that risk completely. So even if you do all the right things, you are still rolling the genetic dice and fingers crossed that you don't have to experience any hip dysplasia problems with your German Shepherd pup. Telling my family that German Shepherds don't shed, that's hilarious. I did the exact same thing to my wife. Boy, did I get in trouble two weeks later. Didn't house train my German Shepherd from day one. Look, this could be a bit of a drama, especially like manners, boundaries, all sorts of stuff, going to the toilet outside. All these things could play a big, this, this could be just a complete nightmare to be honest. So from day one, I highly recommend get a trainer, get a crate, do your boundary training, um, utilize the crate to help you with toilet training and essentially that'll put you on the right path. But this is vital house training from day one. So training in general needs to start from the day you bring home your German Shepherd puppy. Number 20, didn't socialize my German Shepherd probably because of COVID-19. That's a doozy and that is not your fault. Um, and that is no one's fault getting a German Shepherd now. Places aren't open. There's a lot of places where you can't socialize. Like socializing a dog, you need to socialize. It, so look, this is, this is something that someone needs to come up with something to help with this. So look guys, I'm not sure what to do because I don't know where you live. This is a problem. Um, I'd say maybe put off getting a German Shepherd for a while, but COVID's here to stay. The, things will probably never be the same again. So this is something that needs to be addressed. And right now I don't have even an answer for it. All right, number 21 is destroying the house, destructive behavior. Yes, this is a doozy. So I experienced this myself. So I put all this time and effort into house training Lucy, into boundary training, all this good stuff. She was a perfect little puppy to be, to, to be honest, she was a perfect inside puppy. Then one day I just turfed around into the backyard and guess what happened? Two hours out there on her own, unaccompanied or, and with unrestricted movement, she, redecorated the entire backyard for me and caused thousands of dollars worth of damage. So I think the best way to manage this is, essentially puppies shouldn't get any free reign and even if they're out in the backyard, they should be supervised. Like, you know, when you have a little toddler or a little kid in a park, you're not just gonna put them in the park and leave them there, they need to be supervised. Treat your puppy as a little kid a little baby even. They need to be supervised with everything they do. And when they do slip up, you can correct them and address the situation. All right, 22, not getting a strong enough vacuum cleaner. Guilty over here. I also told my wife that German Shepherds don't shed, so that's probably why we don't have a strong vacuum cleaner. Highly recommend a Dyson and maybe 17 Roombas. So number 23 is not training frequently enough. Now, this is a simple mistake that a lot of people can make and people's lives get busy and whatnot. But what you can do is start utilizing the meal timings for training sessions. So instead of giving your dog a free breakfast and a free dinner, why don't you make your dog work for 10 minutes for that dinner and feed them by hand. So every command you give them, give them a little handful of kibbles or a piece of chicken or whatever it is they're eating and feed them that way, make them earn their food. Then you've now given them two training sessions for the day. Number 24 is over socializing in dog parks. Look. I think there's more problems with under socializing, but if you're starting to think that you're over socializing your dog, you maybe get behavioral issues or anything like that, or I don't know, things are going wrong, maybe just step away from taking them to the dog park and maybe kind of start introducing more just like solo walks on lead around the town, things like that. There's always a solution to every problem that arises. Um, and if you're unsure of what's going on or whatever, just literally contact the dog trainer, get onto it ASAP. Underestimating the amount of energy, mental stimulation and physical stimulation this German Shepherd breed needs. Look, I think a lot of people do do that and I think a lot of people love the idea of having a German Shepherd, but in reality, maybe not the best idea. Guys, this dog is a lifelong commitment. Just know that when you're getting into it. It's like a marriage or this is like having kids. Um, these guys need, you know, an hour and a half of exercise a day. They need training. These guys eat a lot of food. These guys cost a lot of money. Everything about them is a lot. 
a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of love, a lot of everything. Don't get me wrong, it is the most rewarding thing I think you'll ever endeavor on if you do go through with it. But there's a lot of people that just don't have the time or that may be a little bit more selfish and that's okay. That is absolutely okay. But just know guys, when you get a German Shepherd, it is a lifelong commitment. This is the last one guys, being guilt tripped into raw feeding by raw feeding extremists on social media. I believe thou art the creator of goodness and nourishment and of sustenance. Holy shit, which made my dog's allergies worse than ever. Guys, I can completely relate to this. So this kind of happened to us when Lucy was a young pup. Uh, we got kind of pressured into going into this raw feeding cult um, and it, it, it ended up being quite a disaster for Lucy because it turned out she had an intolerance to larger protein molecules, which wasn't the best for her or the backyard. So. We essentially then got her onto a really high quality prescribed kibble made up of smaller protein molecules, so it's easy for her to digest. Now, ever since we got onto this, we haven't had a problem ever again with any digestive problems. Now, these little digestive issues are problems that German Shepherds can have. Unfortunately, it's almost a genetic trait, but you know, it is what it is. So, what I'm trying to say here, guys, is don't like, don't get me wrong, raw fitting is awesome. And it, 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 if it works for you, good on you. I, I'm happy for you. Didn't work for us, and we were kind of made to feel like we were like monsters for not, you know, continuing with it. Um, so the vet told me a really good piece of advice, and there's no one right diet for dogs. There are 10 different amazing diets you could have your dog on that can give them all the nutrients they need. So as long as you're doing the best thing for your dog, that's the best thing that you can do. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you got belly aware of this, please hit the like button, comment below, subscribe if you're not, and we'll see you in the next video. Can you get bokeys?